Go. Welcome to the White and United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Clarissa South Holland, the pastor here, and joining me today is our organist, June Pfeiffer Bell, and our soloist, Charles Norton. Hear now the call to worship. In the midst of our failures, we stand in God's grace. In the midst of our struggles, we boast in our hope through Christ. In the midst of our suffering, we claim the endurance given by the Holy Spirit. In every part of our lives, the love of our divine Creator has been poured into our hearts. Let us be open to this love as we join together in worship. In honor of Flag Day, June has picked a few special pieces of music for us. hear Paul's words. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our suffering knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not disappoint us because god's love has been poured into our hearts through the holy spirit that has been given to us this is the word of god thanks be to god 
For those of you that get my weekly phone call, on uh, Monday I shared with you that one of my favorite theologians is John Philip Newell. Currently, he is doing a series on wisdom during the pandemic. Two weeks ago, he talked about the 12th century mystic, Hildegard of Bingen. Hildegard said, like an eagle, we need to fly with two wings of awareness. Awareness of life's beauty and awareness of life's pain. What I hear Hildegard say 900 years ago is that suffering and beauty are both parts of human life. It is our suffering that gives us solidarity with those who are in pain, and it helps us to see the beauty in life. Suffering teaches us compassion for those who are suffering. And the Apostle Paul, he knew about pain and suffering. In 2 Corinthians, we read, Five times I have received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked. For a night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters. And the church tradition also tells us that um, Paul was beheaded sometime during the reign of Nero. So Paul acknowledged that there was pain in the world. But he did not focus on the pain, but on the hope that comes from being disciples of Jesus Christ. He wrote, Suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Frederick Bigner says, for Christians, hope is ultimately hope in Christ, the hope that he really is for what for centuries we have been claiming him to be. The hope that despite the fact that sin and death still rule the world, he somehow conquered them. The hope that in him and through him, all of us stand the chance of somehow conquering them too. The hope that in some unforeseeable and in some unimaginable way, he will return with healing in his wings." End quote. As Christians, we have hope because Jesus overcame sin and death. And because he overcame sin and death, we too can overcome sin. An example of someone who experienced suffering like Paul, but found hope, was Harriet Tubman. Tubman's exact birth date is unknown, but estimates place it between 1820 and 1822 in Dorchester County, Maryland. She was born Aramita Ross, the daughter of Harriet Green, and Benjamin Ross. Tubman had eight siblings. By the age five, Tubman's owner rented her out to a neighbor as a domestic servant. And I read that one of her responsibilities was caring for the babies, and that if they cried, she then was beaten. 
but early signs of her resistance to slavery and its abuse came at the age of 12 when she intervened to keep her master from beating an enslaved man who had tried to run away. She was hit in the head with a two pound weight, leaving her with a lifetime of severe headaches and narcolepsy. When she was in her late twenties, she had had enough and she decided to run away to Philadelphia. And one of the amazing things is she made it there safely on her own. Harriet had a deep Christian faith, and she believed that God spoke to her through her visions. She was known as Moses of her people because like Moses, she liberated the slaves and took them to freedom. And I read that at one point she had a $40,000 bounty on her life. And in today's terms, that would be like a million dollars. That's how much they wanted to catch her. And in the beginning, they all thought too, Moses must be a man that he's able to pull all of this off. So Harriet Tubman was enslaved, escaped, and helped 70 others gain their freedom as a conductor in the Underground Railroad. She made 13 trips to free slaves and never lost a passenger. Tubman also served as a scout, a spy, a guerrilla soldier, and a nurse for the Union Army during the Civil War. She is considered the first African-American woman to serve in the military. She died in her 90s. And on her gravestone are written the words, Servant of God, well done. This hope that Paul and Herod had is not only offered to us, but it's offered to all of creation. It calls us to stand with anyone or anything that is suffering. Last week, as your pastor, I went to a Black Lives Matter protest in Manchester so I could stand in solidarity with those who participated. And I was surprised to discover that the young woman that organized um, the protest was 14 years old and she was a freshman in high school. And she was passionate for her community and for helping her community to become a better place. I was energized by the diversity of young people that were there, and I left feeling hopeful for our nation. We are living through a moment in time that is calling us to fly with new wings. We are being asked to become more aware of creation and of its beauty, as well as becoming more aware of life and of its suffering. I want to end with a reading by Reverend Ann McKenzie. We without a future, safe, defined, delivered now, salute you, God, knowing that nothing is safe, secure, and volatile here except you. And even that eludes our minds at times. We did not want an easy God, but we did not contemplate that it would be quite this hard, this long, this lonely. So if we are to be turned inside out and upside down, with even our pockets shaken, just to check what's rattling and left behind, 
We pray that you will keep faith with us and be with us, holding our hands as we weep, giving us strength to continue, and showing us beacons along the way to becoming new. Amen. I just want to share with you a word about when the church is going to open. For those of you that received um, a phone call from Kathy, you know that this coming week the worship committee will be meeting and discussing when it is appropriate for us to begin services and the CLC. Um, what we are most concerned about is keeping people safe from the virus during this time. So sometime this week, you'll receive a phone call with an update. But I also want you to know that in addition to opening up services in CLC, we continue to offer them um, online in this kind of in-between time. This morning, I have a pastoral prayer that is adapted uh, by a prayer that Austin Fleming wrote. Let us pray. Another day, Lord, your gift to us to open in our hearts and in our hands. Another day, Lord, a challenge to accept and not avoid a mystery to be lived and not to solve. Another day, Lord, not like any day before, nor any day to come, but indeed the only day that's truly ours. Another day, Lord, and though we fear it or want to flee it, with your help we'll face it and live it. Tomorrow is not yet here, Lord, and yesterday is gone. So it's a brand new day for us to live, just one day at a time. Another day, not just another day. Today's the day that you've made, Lord, for us to make our own. We thank you for this day, Lord, whatever it may hold. Help us generously share it with all whose paths cross ours. And hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. The Finance Committee of I would like to thank you for your continued financial support of the church during this time. Um, and I'd like to offer an offering blessing for the gifts we have received. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we have and all that we are, that we may praise you, not with our lips only, but with our lives, turning the duties, the sorrows, and the joys of all our days into a living sacrifice to you, through Jesus Christ our Savior, amen.
Hear now the benediction. Paul tells us that the love of God has been poured into our hearts. As you go through the week and you go to the grocery store or talk on the phone or converse over Zoom, remember to take some of that love that is in your heart and pour it out and share it with others. And may the blessing of God go with you throughout the week. Amen.